Hi everyone. We will now discuss about the frequency response of cascode amplifiers. In this lecture, we will analyze this cascode amplifier in a slightly different way than what it is conventionally done. And in a conventional analysis, it is well known that the dominant pole of a cascode amplifier occurs at the output node. Now in this lecture, by analyzing this cascode amplifier as a cascade of common source and common gate amplifier, we will show that that is not the case and the dominant pole actually occurs at the intermediate node here. So before we go with this analysis, so first I will quickly take you through the conventional analysis of a cascode amplifier. In a conventional analysis, the cascode amplifier is generally represented by the transconductance amplifier representation. So which is uh, the, co the common source common gate cascade is simply replaced by a transconductance amplifier model. So a voltage controlled current source and an output resistance in parallel with it. The output resistance of a cascode amplifier is again well known. We have spent quite a bit of time on analyzing that. It is simply given by R0 plus R0 plus Gm R0 square or R0 into 2 plus Gm R0. This is an exact expression or approximately we know that the output resistance is R0 times the intrinsic gain. It gets multiplied by Gm R0 where this Gm R0 happens to be the gain of the common gate device. So when we have resist resistance of value R0, we discussed that when you look into the drain, the resistance value is going to be Gm R0 times larger. And we discussed why does it make sense intuitively in the previous lectures. Now the, out I mean the effective transconductance is same as the transconductance of the first device. We said when we measure this transconductance, of the short circuit transconductance of the output, most of this current at the output will be equal to Gm times Vi where Gm is the transconductance of the first transistor which is the common source device times the input voltage. So that will be your output current. Again these two are well known results. So using this we can directly write the transfer function So for the circuit. So that is going to be minus Gm into R out is the DC gain. Okay, Capacitor is an open circuit so we can write it that way. And the pole is simply the point where the resistor and the capacitor impedances cancel out and they look like an open circuit and that happens when R out becomes equal to minus 1 by SCL. So this is the point where your resistor and capacitor impedances cancel out and that is going to look like an open circuit. So that is the point where the pole occurs and that turns out to be minus 1 by CL R out. And we said R out can be approximated as R naught into Gm R naught so that is nothing but Gm R naught square. So when I substitute R out as Gm R naught square the DC gain will be minus of Gm R naught the whole square. So if you see this looks like a cascade of a common source and a common gate. So we said approximately the DC gains of a common source and a common a gate amplifier the maximum gain is Gm R naught. Okay, approximately for a common gate it is approximated to Gm R naught. So the cascade of two amplifiers the gain is going to be the square of the individual stage gains. In this case it is same so therefore it is square of the individual stage gains. The minus sign comes from the common source amplifier. And the pole is now 1, one by Cl into Gm R0 square. So the DC gain here, I am writing it in terms of, uh, in simpler terms so that we can compare it with a common source amplifier. So if I quickly write the transfer function of a common source amplifier with just one capacitor at the output, it is going to be minus Gm R0 plus 1 plus SCL R0. So I have used this term called A0 the intrinsic gain which is the product of Gm into R0. So the DC gain is approximately the square of A0 and the pole if you see it is 1 by Cl R0 into Gm R0. So the pole reduces by a factor of A0 when you compare it with a common source configuration the pole is 1 by Cl R0. So here it reduces by a factor of A0 and the DC gain increases by a factor of A0. So if you plot the frequency response here, the DC gain if you see here it is Gm R0 times A0 or into Gm R0 and the pole if you see here this is actually I'll, 1 by Cl R0 is the pole of a common source amplifier divided by A0 you get the pole of a cascode amplifier. So the gain bandwidth product, the product of the DC gain and the, the 3 dB bandwidth 
is same for both the common source and the cascode amplifier and that's equal to gm by cl again this is an approximate result but it, it the approximation is valid for most of the cases because gm or not is assumed to be much greater than one so this is a very valid approximation so shown here I've, in pink what i've shown here is the frequency response of a common source amplifier in yellow this is the cascode amplifier so what we can see is that even though the dc gain is higher the pole is at a lower frequency compared to a common source amplifier so that's why after a certain stage it's going to look the same the transfer function of both both the common source and the cascode amplifier it's going to look the same at very high frequencies so mind you this analysis is assuming there is only one large capacitor at the output the transfer characteristic will look slightly different when you have uh, intermediate capacitors the parasitic capacitors So that's it about a quick review of cascode amplifier. So now we'll carry on with our analysis. So what we are going to do in this lecture, what's not done conventionally, is to analyze this as a cascade of two single stage amplifiers, as a cascade of a common source and a common gate amplifier. So to analyze this, if I want to first see, to analyze this problem, I need to know what is the input impedance of a common gate amplifier. So that is one result I'm going to use this in this lecture, which I have already discussed how to find input impedance of a common gate amplifier in the previous lectures. We'll be using that result in this lecture. So if I want to find the common so the input impedance of a common gate amplifier with an R0 present, if you recall in the previous lectures, I said if there was no R0, the input impedance will approximately be just 1 by gm. But then the, when you have R0, then the input impedance becomes a very strong function of what you connected the load or the, the drain terminal. So, and we intuitively said that the current flowing, if I apply to measure the input impedance, I'm going to apply a voltage source Vi and measure the current here or Vx and measure the test current Ix and take the ratio of the voltage and current. And we saw the same current flows through this capacitor Cl as well. So, therefore, if I find the voltage at this node, then I can guess what's the current that's being drawn, okay? Because I know the impedance here, voltage divided by the impedance is going to give me the current. Now we said intuitively, uh, for a common gate amplifier, approximately the voltage is going to be 1 plus gm or not. So again, I haven't included the loading effect here. Uh, this is again an approximation. So then, if I apply Vx here, a large voltage is going to apply, appear here. So which means it's going to draw a large current. So when you see at the input, it, it's, if, if there is a large current, it means it looks like a smaller impedance. It looks like as though the impedance is scaled down by a factor of 1 plus gm or not. Okay. So this is something we have already done it. And I'll just finally quote the final result. We said that if I have a load resistance ZL, here I've written for a general load resistance, the input impedance is given by ZL of S plus R0 by 1 plus A0, where A0 is GM times R0. So this is the result we are going to use in this lecture. So if I am going to use the result which is ZL plus R0 by 1 plus GM R0, so A0 is 1 plus GM R0, so then I have the load resistance is a purely capacitive load, so which is 1 by SCL plus R0 by 1 plus GM R0. So you will actually have a capacitive component and a resistive component. So if I draw an equivalent circuit for this, it's going to look like this. A capacitor in series with a resistor. Now this result should make intuitive sense because at very high frequencies, the capacitor is going to look like a short circuit and the resistance is simply going to reduce to R0 by 1 plus gm R0. If this is approximately equal to 1 by gm. Okay. At low frequencies, it's going to look like a large capacitor. In fact, at DC, it's going to look like an open circuit. And that makes intuitive sense because if you recall from the previous lectures, we said for a common gate amplifier, if you open circuit the drain terminal, then the looking in impedance is infinity. Because if you apply a finite voltage here, since the current that's flowing here is zero, the current drawn from the input will also be zero. So for a finite voltage, no current is drawn, so therefore the input impedance is infinity. So now we'll use this impedance and try to analyze the, or try to derive an expression for the st first stage gain. So this is the impedance offered by the common gate amplifier to the common source first stage amplifier. So 
shown here is the equivalent circuit of the first stage common source amplifier. So this is the impedance load impedance offered by the common gate amplifier. And R0 here is the uh, is the uh, the drain to source resistance of the common source amplifier. I've I've actually in this MOSFET I have shown R0 separately here. I haven't included with it with the MOSFET. So MOSFET is just a transconductance amplifier. So if you apply VI here, you are going to have a current GMVI flowing here. And we have already discussed how to write transfer functions given impedances. So if you are given a complex impedance like this, we know how to write the transfer function. So first you need to find poles and zeros for this. So there is only one capacitor. So at max you can have one pole and one zero. So for this circuit, first I will try to find the uh, zero or zero is pretty easier to find. If I want to find zero, this branch. So we have to find the frequency at which this brand, branch vanishes to zero because this is a constant resistor, so this is never going to go to zero at any frequency. But then this branch here is a frequency dependent impedance. So we are trying to find if this branch impedance can go to zero at any value of s. And it turns out it goes because if I just equate the capacitive impedance equal to the negative of the resistive impedance, then both the impedances there in series, they will cancel out and behave like a short circuit. So that is like zero impedance and that happens at when I just equate the two impedances. I am going to get it at 1 by C L R naught. That is the 0 for this resistive, the impedance, the impedance network. And to find the pole, again, what I can do is, I can, the, I need to find the frequency at which this overall impedance blows up to infinity. That happens when this overall impedance cancels out this. So, R naught becomes equal to negative of 1 by SCL into 1 plus GMR0 plus R0 by 1 plus GMR0. If you, you write that expression, you are going to get a slightly complicated expression, but you can use some intuitive intuitions to solve this or, or you can directly find the time constant seen with resist, effective resistance seen by the capacitor. So the capacitor is CL into 1 plus GMR0. The effective resistance seen by the capacitor is the series equivalent of the two resistors R0 plus 1 by GM. So if I assume 1 by GM is much smaller compared to R0, I can approximate it to R0 itself. So this can again be approximate, this is the time constant of the capacitor CL, approximated to CL into GM R0 square. So the expression for pole, the left of plane pole, reduces to minus 1 by CL GM R0 square. So if I now I have the pole, I know the 0 and I also know the DC gain which is minus GM R0. So I can now write the transfer function. So minus GMR0 is a transfer function, the 0 is known and the pole is also known, so we could write the total whole transfer function. If you look at a very interesting thing here is that the pole which was supposed to appear at the output is actually appearing at the first terminal itself, the first node itself. And there is also a 0 present which is at 1 by CLR0. So if I try to plot this frequency response, the DC gain is going to be GMR0, so this is just the magnitude response, so you will have magnitude as GMR0. The pole will occur at 1 by CL into GMR0 square. This is where the pole of a normal cascode amplifier is. Uh, cascode amplifier is. And then at frequency of 1 by CLR0, you have a 0, so the transfer function starts to flatten out at high frequencies. And if you see the high frequency gain of the first stage is going to be 1. That should make intuitive sense because for the first stage, the looking in impedance offered by the common gate amplifier at very high frequencies is going to be 1 by gm. So since it is loaded by, by a load of 1 by gm and I can assume that is going to be much smaller than R0, so I can ignore R0 as well. So the gain is going to be minus of gm by gm. So that is minus 1. So I've, since I am plotting the magnitude here, it is going to be 1. So that is the transfer function for the first stage in a cascode amplifier. The second stage uh, is actually what I have shown here, it is a common gate amplifier because now that we want to analyze the, for, to analyze the overall amplifier, we have just finished the analysis of the first stage. Now we will do the analysis of the second stage which is a common gate amplifier. So we have now so far, we have found the voltage till this point. 
Now we'll have to find the gain from this point to the output node. Now this is a circuit we have already analyzed it, and uh, this is a it's a common gate amplifier with just one capacitor at the output node, and uh, so the pole uh, will occur at one by CL into R naught, and the zero will occur at infinite frequency. So there is no finite zero in this. So the only possibility of this circuit giving a, a zero is when the capacitive impedance becomes zero. And that happens at infinite frequency. So there is no re, uh, finite zero in the system, in, in this second stage amplifier. The pole, you find that by finding the point where your output impedance of this stage blows up to infinity. And that happens at 1 by CL or not, minus 1 by CL or not. Uh, I've already discussed this in the previous lecture, so I'm just directly going to quote that result. So the overall transfer function is the DC gain for a common gate amplifier, which is 1 plus GM or not by 1 plus SCL or not. So there is no zero here. So it has only one pole. And I can make another approximation. 1 plus GM or not can be approximated to GM or not. So you have this as your final transfer function. So if you plot your transfer function, the DC gain is going to be GM or not, and the pole is going to occur at 1 plus CL or not. Now we'll try to combine the transfer function of both the inputs, both the two, both the stages. So the overall transfer function V0 by VI is the first stage gain multiplied by the second stage gain. A very important point to observe here is that in the first stage we had a zero at CL or not. The second stage that happens to be a pole. Now, does this make sense? I mean, why, how come a, zero, a pole at the first stage becomes, a second stage becomes a zero for the first stage? It makes intuitive sense because we said that in a common gate configuration, the input impedance turns out to be ZL by 1 plus A. A happens to be the gain of the amplifier. And since the gain of the amplifier blows up to infinity at some value of S, for the same value, the input impedance of a common gate amplifier will actually go to zero. So if the input impedance goes to zero, then the gain of the first stage will also go to zero. Because the gain of the first stage is simply GM times R0 parallel with Zn of the second stage. So if Zn goes to zero, then the overall impedance at the first stage will go to zero. So GM times Zn will also go to zero. So that's why we have a zero there. So now, the zero on the pole will get perfectly cancelled out. And you'll have the transfer function reducing to the conventional cascode amplifier transfer function. The DC gain is GMR naught square. And the pole happens to be at 1 by CL GMR naught square. So this is omega p. I've written it in radians per second. So generally, the sign matters when I write it in terms of s. On an s-plane, the sign matters. So it's a left-off plane pole, so it will be S is minus omega P. SP, the pole of the system will be in the left-off plane pole. And in radians per second, it's just 1 by CL GM R naught square. So this is your overall transit function. So what we learned in this lecture is that we said that when you analyze this cascode amplifier as a two-stage amplifier, as a common source, common gate cascade amplifier, we said that the dominant pole actually occurs at the first stage itself or at the first node itself. But then there is also a zero present in the first stage and that zero happens to be the pole in the second stage. Or I can say otherwise, the vice versa. So the pole of the second stage happens to be a zero for the first stage. And when I multiply these two transfer functions to get the final transfer function, the pole and zero will cancel out and I'll be left with just one pole. And that happens to be the pole of a, a conventional cascode amplifier. So that's what uh, I wanted to discuss in this lecture. So uh, in a conventional analysis, we miss out this point that the dominant pole is not shown to be occurring at the first stage. Now this should raise a very important question. Does it mean that, so for example, if I take a simple uh, cascode amplifier this way, say driven with an input, and say apply a very small step current. So assuming that you know the amplifier is still in the linear region, I mean in the saturation region, uh, wherein it it is still going to behave like a linear amplifier. I'm going to apply a very small step current 
and try to observe the voltage change at this point. If the dominant pole is going to occur at the first node, shouldn't that mean that you know the time constant of this uh, uh, the output node should it be just CL into R naught? I mean, which is the pole of the second stage? The answer is no, because in a when we do this analysis, the most important thing to understand here is that the common gate amplifier is the reason why we are actually seeing the pole in the first stage. The common gate amplifier is what that makes the two nodes interacting. In fact, when you apply a current step at the output node, you will actually see the time constant as R out, where R out happens to be GM R naught square. Okay? So that's 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 the conventional cascode amplifier action times CL. That's your time constant. So if I apply a step input of a small step current of value I naught, the steady state value is going to be I naught into GM R naught square, and then it's going to raise with the time constant given by GM R naught square CL. So which is 1 by omega p, the inverse of a pole of a conventional cascode amplifier. Now the interesting thing that we discussed in this lecture is that what happens when I apply a step at the intermediate node? How will the trans I mean the step response look like? If I apply a very small current I naught at that point, we know that the steady state value, the DC impedance at this node is R naught. So the steady state value is going to be R naught. But then this point we just discussed, the impedance also has a zero at 1 by CL R naught. So in fact, what it means is that if I if you just quickly recall, the equivalent circuit looks like this. It is R naught, a capacitor of value CL into 1 plus GM R naught, and a resistor of value approximately 1 by GM. So this is R naught by 1 plus GM R naught. I'm going to call it as 1 by GM. So when you apply a sudden step current, the capacitor is going to look like a short circuit. So the equivalent impedance is going to be R naught parallel 1 by GM. So I'll approximate it as 1 by GM. So suddenly your output will see a step, a sudden jump. The output, I mean, at, at the second stage output, you won't see that because a capacitor is going to short out the output completely. Whereas here, you'll have a purely resistive component of value 1 by GM at very, uh, very high frequency, which is for a sudden change, this is the impedance that the circuit is, uh, that the intermediate node is going to offer. It's going to offer an impedance of 1 by GM. And that can also be explained using a zero. So when you have a zero, you, you can you are bound to expect such sudden changes in the inputs, especially outputs, especially at t equal to zero. The steady state value is determined by the DC gain, the DC impedance of this network, so which is R naught itself. So finally, it's going to go to R naught. The interesting thing here is that the time constant will be same as the time constant of the output node. So that's what uh, what I was trying to explain in this lecture. And that happens because of this common gate amplifier and that's what is making both these nodes interacting. The intermediate node and the output node, it's making it interacting. And if you recall from the previous lecture on common gate amplifiers, I said it's a bidirectional amplifier. It can amplify in either directions. In one side it has a high gain, other side it has a low gain. So that's it about, uh, uh, about the cascode amplifiers. The next lecture, I'll start analyzing the single stage amplifiers in a more rigorous way.